Hello, hello. So, for the two, three, or four of you, or less, however many watch my channel, and don't comment, um, what is socially relevant today? Well, I imagine there's a tremendous amount of topics we could pick from, uh, but as far as one that could pose as a question in regards to its title as a topic and one that could solicit feedback, which again, the feedback's entirely on you. If you take the time to watch my video, the feedback's entirely on you. Um, I'd have to say media bias and big tech, big media, um, and whether it's they want to indoctrinate us, whether they want to control the flow of information, whether they have a socio-political agenda, a, a straight-up political agenda, a social agenda, whatever the case may be. Um, so if you keep it relatively simple, uh, YouTube banned Steven Crowder for a little while, all right? And I'll, I'll circle back to that. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Joe Rogan had Sanjay Gupta on his podcast, and he, he confronted Sanjay. And he was like, look, you know, you work for a network that tried to basically slander me because I came out as having COVID, and I... Uh, I ran off this list of things that I was taking, prescribed by a doctor, and your your news agency singled out one of those items and then, you know, just ran to town with it in a completely different direction. So, all right, for those who, but I mean, if, if you're watching me on social media, then you should be familiar with this story. Joe Rogan came down with uh, COVID. And he took a number of different things, you know, and antibiotics, uh, vitamin C, and I, uh, vitamin C uh, intravenously, and uh, uh, the human dosage prescription for ivermectin. Uh, ivermectin also happens to have an additional quality of being used as a deworming medicine for horses, um, but it's a Nobel Prize-winning medicine nonetheless. And for whatever reason, CNN and other progressive, hard left-leaning news agencies and media outlets of all kinds latched onto this like it was some aha, I got you motherfucker moment. And they ran with it. Um, and they ran in a completely different direction of their own choosing so that they could sell it a certain way and they can shape the narrative a certain way. Now, Sanjay Gupta is a, a, a fully licensed doctor. I don't know how often he practices anymore, like sees patients, uh, performs surgery, whatever the case may be. Uh, and he's been contracted um, or he's been on retainer with CNN as their medical specialist. And he was on the Joe Rogan podcast for... And Joe Rogan, if you're not familiar, he does like two and a half, three hour long podcasts. There was this like five to ten minute segment where he basically confronts Sanjay. And if you haven't seen his podcast, it doesn't matter who you are. If there's a topic that is confrontational in nature, he's going to confront you on it. All right, And maybe that's just who he is as a person. But he confronted Sanjay on it and he brought up two specific topics. He brought up the fact that his news agency was wrong in the way that they reported it and because of how wrong in the way they were reporting it and the fact that the average citizen can physically research this stuff on their own, it makes them look that much more incredible, all right, and adds to this, this ongoing uh, proliferation of people who no longer trust news agencies, all right, people who no longer trust the big names in news and the 24-hour news cycle where, again, if you flip back to uh, Steven Crowder, years and years ago, even when I was a kid, all right, to include at some point in my youth, we didn't have a 24-hour news cycle. We didn't have channels on cable television, all right, let alone cable television that did the news. If you were lucky, you've got maybe 30 minutes of news at a certain time of night between ABC, CBS, NBC, and maybe Fox, and then WGN, for those of us that grew up in Chicago. You got about a half hour of news, and most of it was local. And unless there was something super sensational that had to be reported, then maybe you got something that was national-based. But most of it was, 
your local base. And growing up in Chicago, we always got local Chicago news. What's going on in Chicago? Well, now you got the 24-hour news cycle. And one of the things that Steven Crowder mentioned was that, you know, if there's really nothing else going on, then you have to, and maybe it wasn't him, maybe it was Russell Brand. I'll get back to that. Um, you, you basically have to create stories. You have to maybe maybe take something small and blow it up. Um, so in the last couple of hours as I've been work, doing some work and getting some stuff done, I put stuff on in the background to listen to. And I listened to Russell Brand, who, anybody who knows who Russell Brand is, is not somebody you would normally think of based on his previous history as a well-rounded, objective, research-based type journalist podcaster, but he's fucking phenomenal. Russell Brand is phenomenal. He's extremely objective while, he, while admitting and maintaining his own thoughts and beliefs on certain topics, and the shit that he's calling out is like, like, Russell Brand's not the person you would expect to be like, bullshit, bullshit, but no, he is. Um, then, of course, you know, you got the Hodge twins. The Hodge twins just went off on The View because these ladies that make up The View, currently speaking, were attempting to defend and justify Sanjay Gupta and like, oh, no, 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 Joe Rogan made himself look like an ass and Joe Rogan was wrong and, you know, he was probably manipulating Sanjay with fear because he's this combative guy and it's like, no, that's that's not it at all. Um, and there's been many people talking about this, this whole concept of how the media wants to control the information flow in order to dictate how you think and how you feel and, and shape your, your views on certain topics to basically control us. Uh, and that's been the overwhelming topic of conversation between the Hodge twins, Joe Rogan, Russell Brand, and Steven Crowder, and even Ben Shapiro, uh, somebody else I had on in the background um, about this, this media control. Um, and to get to to add greater greater context to that, all right. So you have the Joe Rogan thing and the ivermectin thing, and everybody, you know, on the left the left side of media clamoring to uh, defend Sanjay and defend CNN because they're either part of that system or that system supports their belief foundation, whatever. Um, and then. You have Steven Crowder being banned from YouTube for various reasons. And one of the things Steven's been trying to say is, here's the deal. You currently get tax exemption status for being, I think it's a publisher. I do apologize in advance. I should have done more research on this before I decided to make this, but it is what it is. So YouTube and other platforms like Facebook and whatnot, um... They benefit from certain tax breaks or certain status breaks, uh, certain exemptions, if you will, by maintaining that of a publisher. In, in other words, we don't edit the content, therefore we're not responsible for the content, and because we're not responsible for the content, we should take advantage of this status. But then they exert a tremendous amount of control over somebody like Steven Crowder, who then says, well, if you're doing it to me, who else have you done it to? So then that prompted this whole thing where YouTube was in congressional and or senatorial hearings for their manipulation and their involvement in certain political things, as in curbing content, um, disrupting content, or preventing content from being seen or heard, or both. Um, which goes towards that, well... If you're going to exercise a certain amount of control over the content, then that means you no longer qualify for this status. You no longer qualify for this exemption because now you're acting as like an editor or, or, or an arbitrator or whatever. I, I don't know what the, the terminology is. That's why I lean on these other people like Shapiro and Crowder and all that who do way more research and have a whole staff and everything. But I, I, get, I get the gist. I get the meaning of it. I get the intent behind it where you're saying you're ex- and you want, to, you want to enjoy all the status privileges of X. But really, in your conduct and your performance and your execution, you're Y. 
and therefore you should not benefit from the status of being X and you should be subjected to all of the statuses of being Y. Um, and I, you know, you, you say that and then you just apply it to everything else as far as, you know, I, I think for a, a, a current social trend of wokeness, I think the one thing that people are starting to become awake to from their slumber is media bias and the media's control of information and how the media distorts and conflates information to support a narrative. And I think more and more people are becoming aware of it. They're waking up to that reality, if you will. Um, I know that's not quite how woke is supposed to work. And I think what I, I think it's it's appropriate because I think what's happening is anything and everything the media has put out, at least the major media sources that has either directly caused, positively impacted, or positively affected current social trends like the woke, the hyper progressive, the hyper liberal, the hyper left. Um, I think people are starting to not just wake up to it, but when cancel culture starts to cancel cancel culture and people are becoming aware of the hypocrisy and people are becoming aware of all these things, you know, I, I think maybe that's the greatest form of enlightenment. You know, I, I made the example once before, all right? If a conservative is going to have a standard 8-ounce glass of wine with dinner because that's what's been deemed the appropriate level of wine, and that's what a conservative is going to have, then an ultra right winger won't have any wine at all. They'll have water. And a liberal might have a 12 ounce glass or a 16 ounce glass. That's what a liberal is going to have. But then an ultra progressive, an ultra lefty, and an excessive liberal is going to have the entire bottle. All right? It's the excess. And that's where I think certain labels take on certain frameworks, is the excess. All right, and for a group of people who've been ex who've been celebrating excess, are starting to see the adverse side effects of excess. Maybe that's what it takes. Maybe that's what it. Maybe that's what we need. Is things need to run their course, all right, before we can get back to some semblance of normal. But I want to know what you think. I want to know if you think the media is 100% responsible, objective. If they report things a certain way. I want to know if you're if you're too blind and too deaf to hear objectiveness. If you're if you're too stubborn and stuck in your own personal echo chambers, where you specifically tune in to channels and agencies that support your personal view of the world, and you refuse to open yourself up to objectiveness. Whatever the case may be, I'd like to hear from you. All right. I've been rambling on for about 13 minutes and some change, so you know the deal. If you've seen this, if you've listened to it, whether you like, whether you subscribe, whether you dislike, whatever the case may be, I don't care. I'm not in it for that. All I want to see is us have these conversations. So by all means, drop a comment. Either leave a comment on Facebook, leave a comment on Instagram, leave a comment under the video on YouTube. Whatever you got to do, let's, let's at least try to meet in the middle and talk. So that's all I got. Till next time.